hey folks, so today we're getting into another user requested video. Now in the time that I've been running this YouTube channel, I've gotten a lot of requests for obscure Tony Rice tunes, and one of those tunes was always Waltz for Indira. So that's what we're doing today. So thanks to all the people that have requested it at some point. Before we do that, though, I do just want to give you a quick reminder that you can go to my website, LessonsWithMarcel.com. There you can get all your bluegrass guitar tabs and merch and Skype lessons. But right now, let's talk about the album. Waltz for Indira comes from the 1980 Tony Rice release, Mar West. It's a real Pickers album that showcases the band's improvisational abilities more than anything. Unfortunately, the album has fallen into mild obscurity. For instance, if you want to purchase this album on CD, there's a Japanese import from 2002 going for $251 on Amazon. Or you can purchase Devlin, essentially a compilation record that also features every track from Mar West except for Mar East. Some listeners do think the sound quality on the Devlin release is worse than the original LP or CD reissue, though. So save yourself the heartache and buy the vinyl. I got mine at a record store on the West Coast for $6.50, but a quick search online says prices vary from $6 to $25. Hey, look, there's my copy. Sorry, enough about how the album is a deeper cut. We can talk about the album history for real now. Mar West was recorded after Tony Rice left the David Grisman Quintet. In 1979, Tony Rice wanted to continue making dog music, and David Grisman wanted to tour around with Stefan Grappelli. So Tony Rice forms the Tony Rice unit and records acoustics, Manzanita, Mar West, Still Inside, and Backwaters over the next three years. Of the eight songs on Mar West, seven are written by Tony Rice, and one is written by Miles Davis. Of the seven Rice tunes, Waltz for Indira definitely stands out as one of the more sentimental instrumentals he's ever written. I'll let Tony introduce it himself, though. We have a, uh, a tune in from an album I call Mar West. Uh, that's a, a slow tune that I wrote for uh, an ex sister in law of mine. She heard me playing bluegrass guitar and playing music with Grisman and, you know, Bale Flag or whoever. And, and she said, Well, why does he ever play anything real pretty? <laughs> <laughs> and thus concludes the standard history lesson that we do here at Lessons with Marcel. Now let's talk theory and see if we can get into some specifics about what techniques Tony Rice uses to play this tune. So the first thing to point out is that we're in the key of B flat with no capo. Now that might scare away some of you trad bluegrass peeps, but I promise you can do this. No, we can do this. So the first thing that we need are some simple scale shapes for B-flat. So let's go with a B-flat major pentatonic and just that full B-flat major scale. Probably the big other thing that should be important to us are these little triad shapes that Tony's using. He's using them as just like shell voicings or arpeggios or melody anchor points. There's probably a, a lot more that you can analyze and break down here, but that's really what stands out to me. So let's look at that. All right, so in the interest of slowly demystifying things, please take a look at the performance again and try to spot all those little triad shapes that Tony might be using and try to feel how Tony never really leaves that major scale position that we laid out. Hopefully you saw something in that performance and we're ready to move on to the whole breakdown. 
All right, now that you've seen all that, we can start by breaking down some of these measures. Here we go. All right, cool, let's do this breakdown. So I got the tab pulled up right in front of me. At the very beginning, we get this pickup phrase. It sounds like this. So the first thing that you're gonna come up against in this tune is that if you have a hard time feeling triplets, that means something that you should think about is working on that first, your triplet feel. So we're looking for like a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, triple, triple, triple. So the pickup phrase feels like, and triple a one, and triple a one, two. This uh, next triplet phrase that we see, I like to bar this. I know this seems just ridiculous, but I bar it with my ring finger and my pinky. So that way when I have to go back and hit this third fret note, I can do it with my first finger. This is all in Tony's break. I know that seems like inconsequential in the melody. You could easily leave that out, but I'm just trying to give you all the detail that I can. Tony plays that and he's hinting at this full, it's actually a B flat 6 9 chord. I know in the music it says B flat major 7. Yeah, when you look at uh, Wyatt's hands, most of the time it's a 6 9 chord. So let's look at that uh, second measure of the real melody. Pretty interesting little phrase there. I'm doing it uh, so that way every single triplet I play is down up down. I know some people might not be huge fans of that because I'm breaking my down up rules, but I play it like that. Down up down, down up down, down up down. I don't know how Tony plays it because there's not great recordings of his hands, but there you go. Let's look at the next measure after that, third measure of the real melody. We do have a uh, hammer-on pull-off triplet. So hammer-on to six, pull-off to five. I guess it's not a triplet in that case. It starts the beginning of a triplet. Now we have one of the most common phrases in the whole piece sounds like this. Now when you play that, it's really tempting to put all of those first three notes together. That's not how Tony plays it. Tony plays that first note just a hair early. If you can read rhythms, you can look at the sheet music, you can see how that's notated. Um, there's an eighth note tied to that triplet, and so that first note comes out just a little early. Same thing happens in this next measure, which would be the second measure of that second line. Instead of playing, it's See how that first note comes in a little bit early and it gives a lot of flavor to the whole piece. Of course, we are bending on acoustic guitar right there as well. We just really want to drag that note up a little bit and let it back down. It doesn't have to be super exact. I'm not looking for a robot. I just want kind of close. Maybe I didn't get all the way there. Maybe I went a little too far. Who knows? It doesn't have to be robotically perfect to, to sell it though. Next, Tony does a little arpeggio here and he strums that chord. It's all part of a B-flat chord. He's about to start over the melody. We get this pickup again. And the very uh, attentive among you may notice that it's different. The first time it was this. And this time it's this. Yeah, that's right. He changed that little piece of melody right there. We have all this. Now this melody is different. And this is on the and of two. And this triplet is very strange. Triple. So two and triple. I think that's one of the actually the harder figures in the tune to get your uh, groove feeling right. After that, we have this again. We already did that. You know how to play that. You know that first note comes in just a little bit early, actually the end of the previous beat. And finally, we get a, a closing piece of that melody. We get this. A uh, nice little way to close it if you're thinking about a B flat pentatonic. You can really see it right there. Now these, this little figure here where he's doing a little bit of strumming, it seems a little awkward. I know it does. Um, but anyway, it sounds like this. Coming in here, he's playing over an A minor 7 flat 5 chord, which would look like this. And look, that's right where the melody is. And then right here, when it switches to A flat 7 flat 5, once again, the melody sits right there too. You can see all of that also feels very pentatonic. Um, lots of triplets throughout this third measure on this line. 
This is cool. He hits this bass note right before the chord actually changes, but he hits the C note, implying that we're switching to the C9 chord. Very smart. Once again, we get that same figure again. We've seen all that before. Our band. We played that phrase. Now we get our tremolo phrase. He plays this. Now the real trick to playing that phrase, I think, is just counting. You can do that by tapping your foot, because you're really just picking this note as fast as you can. One, two, three, one, two, triple one. After that, we get our bend again. This familiar phrase. We've done that. And he changes the, uh, the actual closing line just a hair. Remember last time it was... This time it's just this. And that's the whole melody, right? Just like I keep saying, it's not as tough as you might think. I know I'm kind of rushing through things. I didn't talk a whole lot about pick strokes because the tune is in 3-4 and it is triplet based. So your pick strokes are liable to get off and have to be reset. Maybe you're gonna have moments where you play down, down, ups. But I'm gonna trust you to find those moments on your own because I think a lot of that is personal choices. Nice, so finally, here's the full performance with Tab. Practice playing along with me or the recording. We're playing it at basically the same speed, and you should probably be able to work it up to the speed. I know it feels like a lot. Of all the Tony Rice breaks that we've covered, the melody to Waltz for Indira is pretty attainable. All right, cool. If you like taking a lesson from the biggest, baddest Billy Goat in the barnyard, there's a bunch of things you can do. Please like this video. Please hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. You can also leave me a comment down below if you want to suggest anything. But really what I would love for you to do is go to my website, lessonswithmarcel.com. There you can find a bunch of free tabs. There's some tabs that you can buy. There's my merch there. You can sign up for Skype lessons. Um, we do blog posts there that talk about all kinds of bluegrass and jazz topics. It's just a great place to hang out. Um, if you're looking for more of me, of course, you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. On Instagram, there is an account that I run called Jazz and Grass where we post new bluegrass or jazz guitar licks every single day of the week, except for Sunday, because Sunday is the day that our podcast comes out. Anyway, I will see you next Wednesday. Bye. Through the valley below My life was running from town That midnight train Spilled her